Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I am bringing you my Phase 3 Frost Raid DPS Guide. Frost has made a massive jump from being one of the worst DPS specs for raiding to being an incredibly important DPS for your raid, especially if you run multiple mages. Frost on the top end is very competitive right now. Before we dive into the guide, a quick shout out to the Mage Discord and all the wonderful people and mods that run it. Chaotic, Twizzles, Human Male Mage, Taiwan, KBNB, and plenty of other Giga Chads are in this server working their butts off to figure out all these things. Seriously, all the information I learn about Mage is from the Mage Discord. These guys are awesome, and I'll have a link to the Mage Discord down below. Let's get started. Okay, why play Frost and why is it good? Just like with Fire, Frost is using Frostfire Bolt for its main rotation. Right now, Frostfire Bolt is scaling insanely hard, and it gains 100% bonus from your spell power. So in our current gear and level, Frostfire Bolt just trucks. As the name suggests, Frostfire Bolt is both frost and fire damage. Importantly, this means it benefits from both Winter's Chill and Improved Scorch. That's right, your Frostfire Bolt will benefit from the 10% increased critical strike chance from Winter's Chill and the 15% increased fire damage from Improved Scorch. The cool thing about Frostfire Bolt is it will stack Winter's Chill for you. So unlike with Fire where you have to maintain Scorch stacks, Frost can face roll Frostfire Bolt. Sims and Logs are showing that if you have two or more mages in your raid, it is better overall raid DPS for you to have one Fire Mage and one Frost Mage to maintain these debuffs. Currently, the Sims say that if you only have one mage, they should be Fire. And if you have three or more mages, all the additional mages should be Fire. This may change over time, but as of right now, you really only need one Frost Mage. Let's talk about Spec. This is what I recommend after my first raid. The main debate here is whether you take Ice Barrier or not. I personally found Ice Barrier super helpful in Sunken Temple after my first time using it. I was expecting me not to want to play Ice Barrier though. There are quite a few bosses that do AoE damage that will cause pushback. Precasting Ice Barrier on pull was preventing that pushback quite a lot and helping my DPS in the end. If you do not want to play Ice Barrier, you can put a point into Flame Throwing for the 3 extra yards on their fire spell, or maybe Burning Souls for the reduced threat. Honestly though, just go Ice Barrier. It felt really good. For runes, we are using Living Balm, Molten Armor, Spell Power, Icy Banes, Frost Fire Bolt, Fingers of Frost, and Deep Freeze. Right now, this rune combination is simming the best. And a lot of the top logs are using this build. There can be an argument to run Burnout and just ignore Fingers of Frost and Deep Freeze, since there's a lot of RNG around Fingers of Frost procs. After trying out both combinations of runes, I prefer the Deep Freeze style. Deep Freeze is useless if you aren't running Fingers of Frost, so if you run Burnout, you obviously won't be using it on boss fights. Here's the bis list I recommend for Frost, it'll be linked below. Freezing Band is not unique, so if you can afford to buy it, get two of them. I was able to buy two of them for 600 gold total. Not sure what the prices are on your realm. Try and get a Frozen Wrath Wand off the Auction House. Frostweed Gloves are super cheap and easy to get. For the offhand, obviously take the Frost version. Everything else is the same as our Fire Abyss. For Consumes, you want the following buffs. The Sunken Temple World buff. Darkmoon Fair Damage buff. Songflower. Atalai Mojo of Forbidden Magic. Warning, these do not stack with Blasted Land Flask, so I will not be listing Blasted Land Flask. Lesser Wizard Oil. Superior Mana Potions. Greater Arcane Elixir, 1% Crit Mage Scroll, 8 NP5 Mage Scroll, Nightfin Soup, Dragon Breath Chili, this scales with spell damage, Elixir of Firepower and Elixir of Frost Power. To clarify how Frostfire Bolt works with spell damage scaling, it will only scale off of the highest of the two spell damage. So if you have 13 fire damage and 42 frost damage, Frostfire Bolt will only gain the plus 42 frost damage. It doesn't double dip into both fire and frost damage. The only reason we are running Elixir of Firepower is because it buffs our Living Bomb. For professions, I recommend you take two of the following four professions. Tailoring, Engineering, Enchanting, or Alchemy. All of them have amazing things that provide us with great raid buffs. I personally recommend tailoring and engineering, but that is a personal choice. Pick any of the two you prefer. For rotation, if possible, precast Frostfire Bolt on pull. 
I will then cast Living Bomb. Right now, I am maintaining Living Bomb on most fights. On short single target fights, you could possibly skip Living Bomb. Most of the fights in Sunken Temple have cleave, so Living Bomb ends up being used a lot. I was using it a lot on single target, and a lot of the top logs were as well. A few logs were being lazy with Living Bomb on single target though. So I am not 100% sure what's best. It might just depend on the fight time. Immediately pop all your cooldowns once you are in position and ready to spam Frost Fireball. Use Icy Veins and your Tailoring Helmet, or any other Consumes or Trinkets you can pop. From here, we are spamming Frost Firebolt. Each Frost Firebolt will stack Winter's Chill, which makes this rotation super easy. The only tricky part comes in when we get a Fingers of Frost proc. Fingers of Frost enables us to use Deep Freeze on bosses. There are a few problems though. Living Bomb consumes Fingers of Frost, so if Living Bomb goes off while Fingers of Frost is proccing, it'll consume those procs. Second thing we are wanting to do is batch our Deep Freeze on the second Fingers of Frost charge. So what we will do is cast Frost Fire Bolt on the first Fingers of Frost proc, and then cast another Frost Fire Bolt. As the second Frost Fire Bolt is going off, we spam Deep Freeze, and it will also use that second charge of Fingers of Frost. This is called batching. Both the second Frost Fire Bolt and Deep Freeze will benefit from one charge of Fingers of Frost, essentially giving you three spells that were buffed by it. If you don't get Fingers of Frost procs, you are literally just spamming Frost Fire Bolt with the occasional Living Bomb. If you are running the Burnout version of this build, you are obviously not using Deep Freeze. You just spam Frost Fire Bolt and Living Bomb in that case. A few tips. Cold Snap is awesome for multiple reasons. One, it refreshes the cooldown on Icy Veins. So on fights you have Cold Snap up for, you can use two Icy Veins. I highly recommend saving Cold Snap for Avatar of Hakkar. Not because of Icy Veins, but because of Ice Block. You can Ice Block off the Blood Effect and it won't transfer to your raid, which is a massive uptime increase. If you happen to get Blood twice, having Cold Snap for this fight will allow you to Ice Block twice. Lastly, a lot of the bosses do random AoE damage and such. Precast Ice Barrier on yourself before pull. And if you are on a fight where loads of extra damage is going out, don't be afraid to recast it mid-fight. I had some fun in this raid as Frost. It was honestly really chill. If your raid has multiple mages and none of them are rocking Winter's Chill, maybe give this build a try. It's an overall raid DPS increase, so you'll be helping your team out at the very least. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I have a new stream schedule. I stream every Monday through Friday starting at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'll be live on both YouTube and Twitch, so come hang out. Take care, boys, and see you in the next one.